Alright, hey, welcome Thanks back. Now, Sunday Simple Skills. We're going to do something really easy today, something that might help you out if you do projects on your bike and you want to do some annealing. And that is the process of heating metal and letting it cool down so that it becomes soft. Now, there are a couple of differences. We've done annealing steel in the past. I've done a video on that. It's very simple. You heat it up and you let it cool down gradually. With aluminium, it's slightly different. We're going to do that one today. With aluminium, you don't let it cool down gradually. You heat it up to the right temperature and you quench it and that's how it becomes all super soft. It just reacts in a different way. Aluminium and steel are extremely different metals and they react in different ways. Now, on the annealing of steel, there are a couple of things that really help you out. As you heat it up to its critical temperature, it changes color, obviously. It goes cherry red and that process gets up to 850 degrees. That's the first indicator that it's at the right temperature, cherry red. The other thing that happens is it goes non-magnetic. Most steel is magnetic and as soon as the magnet just drops off, it goes non-magnetic, you know it's at the critical temperature. Then with steel, you set it down to one side and you leave it to cool gradually. In fact, the more gradually, the better. Some people stick it in a bucket of sand which insulates it and lets it cool down even slower. That's the process with steel. With aluminium, as I said, the process is different. You get it to critical temperature and you quench it in cold water and that makes it soft. But there's a couple of problems when you get aluminium. Obviously with the steel, there are those two indicators, the color change and the non-magnetic thing. But with aluminium, you get neither of that luxury because firstly, it's not magnetic in the first place, so the magnet isn't gonna help you. And secondly, it never changes color. You can heat aluminium until it runs liquid and it will simply stay silver, just like that. It never changes color, so you don't get that indicator either. So the challenge with annealing aluminium is knowing what temperature you need to heat it to, and when you get to that temperature, how to tell that it's at the right temperature. Now you could use some sort of laser thermometer, but it doesn't really work properly the right way to go. Uh, and the reason it doesn't work properly is because those laser thermometers reflect. When they reflect, you don't get a genuine temperature. So what you use instead is soot. It's really old school, it's a blacksmith's trick. When you take soot from a candle, or if you're posh and you've got an acetylene torch, whatever, get a load of soot all over the aluminium so it's all black then burn the soot off. And that's how you tell the temperature for annealing aluminium. The temperature at which the soot burns away is incidentally also the same temperature that is correct to quench it in water and then it's all soft. So rather than talk about it, I'm gonna do it, show you how it actually works. I've got two identical pieces of alley cut from the same sheet as you saw. I'm gonna anneal one and not the other and then I'll bend them and you'll be able to see from the way they both react which one is softer. So let's get on with it. Oh, there we are, there's enough sort on that now for when you burn it all away and it all goes back to being silver and quench it, that should be nice and soft and annealed. So let's see if it works. Right, for what it's worth, it will stay annealed and soft until you work it. It won't suddenly go hard. I can leave that now for a year and it will still be as soft as it is now. So here's the test. That's the unannealed standard original bit. If you bend it, quite hard because it's three mil. And with quite a fistful of effort, you get that. But with this one, There we are, it's as easy as that, just screw it up in a ball almost. You can hear, it's still slightly different in temper to the original metal. Um, Aluminium's weird, if you bend it too much it will fracture because it's not, it's, it's not malleable and soft like steel. When it, even when you anneal it, it still gets a little bit brittle. So don't bend it around too much, experiment with it, get some scrap bits of metal and have some fun, that's what it's about. That quite simply is easy to re-anneal at any time, get some more soot on it, 
quench it, heat it, quench it and whatever and you'll get it back nice and soft again and you can keep re-annealing it over and over until you're finished with it in a workpiece. This will be something you might do if you're making an aluminium mudguard and you want, to, you want to curve it and bend it, you might have an English wheel, annealing it makes it far far easier to make a nice shape without it fracturing or cracking which aluminium can be guilty of. So there we are, the trick is the soot, that's what it's about, get the soot on there and then when that soot burns off that's the critical temperature, that's the trick, that's the simple skill today is to know when aluminium is at the critical temperature temperature to quench in order to anneal it and use the soot for that. There you go. Thanks for watching. I hope they helped you. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you next week. He liked to play a little pool and work on old cars. He never really went to church. He liked giving things at the bar.